Good evening, y'all. This, um, oh, what is it, Monday, Monday night, the 22nd of January. Um, the other day, uh, Lead Farmer put together a video about buying land and being careful about it. And I commented on that video and told him that I was going to do a video from the attorney perspective. Um, this is the third time I've recorded this video because the first two times I just didn't like the way it turned out. It was, um, I recorded it in my office and um, anyway, it's a bit stuffy. So I figured I just got in some fig cuttings. I got in some fig cuttings and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna pop those up and while I do that, I'll talk to y'all about buying land. So, um, a little bit of background on me. Um, I am an attorney. I'm sure I look like it right. <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm an attorney. I've been practicing for almost nine years, do real estate um, and a bunch of different stuff. We're, we're what I like to call a general practice firm, just like your um, your family doctor does general practice. Um, we do general practice law. The only thing we really don't do is bankruptcy and tax. Those are pretty specialized things. But in any event, with relation to real estate, um, of course I've got experience with that from a uh, from the perspective of being an attorney. But I've also bought land myself. I, I, I have a house. I have about a half acre right here in Bamberg, same place I practice law. Um, and, and you know, I practice law in South Carolina. I don't practice anywhere else. So if you're in North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Alaska, I don't know anything about your laws. So take this with the grain of salt that it's intended with. Um, but buying land, you need two things to start off with. Um, having a realtor is good. You don't have to have a realtor. Um, but you but they can help you find what you're looking for because if you have criteria that you want, they'll be able to find it for you. Um, and it's their job to find it for you. It's when you when you hire a realtor, and the first time I ever hired a realtor, um, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Let me put it this way. If you hire a realtor and you're driving around and see a sign that has somebody else's name on it, don't call that guy. Call your realtor. They can get you into that house. Um, I learned that the hard way. But, you know... When you're 19, you do stupid things. So anyway, I'm 35 now, you know, practicing law for a few years, eight years, almost nine years now. And the, you need a realtor, okay? Maybe. But you absolutely need a lawyer. Um, in South Carolina, you cannot close a real estate transaction without a lawyer. Um, if you do, um, that's it's, it's invalid. Now, you, I can sign a deed over to you if I'm just, you know, Joe Blow on the street, but that doesn't mean it's any good because here a deed is only good once it's filed with the clerk of court for the courthouse in the county in which the property resides. Pretty simple. Properties in Bamberg County, you record it with the Bamberg County clerk of court. For us, it's at the clerk of court's office right here at the, uh, the uh, courthouse. Um, or places like Aiken, um, they have a register for, and I can't even say the word, MES, any Mesne convenient conveyances. Um, they have a separate um, officer for that, and and that's just a political issue of you, you, clerks of court are elected, uh, registers of deeds are are hired, um, and so you might get an elected person who who doesn't know what the heck they're doing, versus someone you hire would know what they're doing. Um, so that's why that, that happens in that scenario. But the reason why you need a, a realtor is really just to find the property you're looking for. After that, it's all about the lawyers. Um, because what the lawyer is gonna do is he's gonna say, okay, give me the tax map number. Okay, I think everybody uses tax map, tax map numbers. Give me the tax map number. And then a lot of times the attorney will search for the title and taxes and any liens on the property, any encumbrances on it, if it's got any HOA um, restrictions and covenants on it, 
You know, those are the kinds of things that your lawyer is going to find. And also, if your lawyer doesn't find it, he or she is on the hook. Okay, so um, for example, we had a case years ago where the lawyer did not find that there was what we call a right of reversion, meaning the particular property was supposed to be used for a particular kind of business. And if it ever stopped being used for that particular kind of business, it reverted back to the original owner. Um, and a bank had loaned a lot of money on that particular piece of property. And uh, suffice it to say, they lost a lot of money. And the bucks, and, and even though they bought title insurance, Okay, and title insurance is a whole other question. Even though they bought title insurance, the title insurance company turned around and looked at the closing attorney and said, why didn't you find it? And that's who got blamed for it. And it was his fault. And just like anybody, he didn't do it intentionally. He just, he missed it in, in a stack of documents that thick. He missed it. It was an older deed several times back in the title. He missed it. And so it can happen even to lawyers, but that's what happens when you have a lawyer involved is that the lawyer carries malpractice insurance. Just like your doctors, everybody makes mistakes, right? Even the guys painting the lines on the roads make mistakes sometimes. So even the best of us. So get a good lawyer. And in my state, the buyer picks the closing attorney, but the seller is certainly welcome to get his or her own. You don't have to bring, you don't have to come to the table with having the same lawyers. You can have, the seller can have his or her own lawyer and the buyer can have his or her own lawyer and you can both come to the closing with a lawyer who has then, again, then you have two lawyers with two malpractice policies that have now reviewed that same stack of information and the title information, basically all we're trying to do is see, all right, the guy you're buying it from, where did she get it? And where did the person that she got it from get it? And so on and so forth, all the way back. You're just looking to see where land came from. And if at some point, and we check 60 years at my office, some offices check 40 years, that's kind of the standard. But really, you can go back as far as you want. If you find a problem within the last at least 40 years, and because that's, that's, that's to deal with mortgages and so forth. But if you find anything within the last 40 years, you got to fix it. Um, acquire, it, it, most of the time um, you can get by with doing a few deeds, a quick claim deed here or there, and I'll explain the different kinds of deeds in a second. But it, most of the time you can do a quick claim deed from an old like cousin or something that might have had an interest in it. And the worst thing, and we run into it in my state all the time, in South Carolina, um, and there's a whole act um, in our code about it, um, it's called the Clementa Pinckney Act, and it is entirely to do with what we call air property, H-E-I-R, air property. And what that means is somebody's granddaddy or somebody's grandmama did not probate their estate. If you have real estate in this state, you have to probate your estate. If you don't, the title does not transfer. I don't care if grandmama owned it and, and your dad was the only heir or the only child. No. That, that is not how that works. You have to probate the land. And it's not that expensive if all they owned was the land. You, you open the probate, you, you, you get cranked up, and you get it probated. And that's a whole other issue I'm not getting into. But the reason why you hire a closing attorney is so that you know you're getting a clean title, that there's no issues in there. Because a quiet title action, which is what you have to file in what we call the Court of Common Pleas Civil Court, um, in our circuit court, which is our, our big court, dealing with everything over $10,000 up to infinity. Um, the, the cheapest quiet title I've ever done um, was an $8,500 quiet title. That was the cheapest. And one I just finished was about $12,000. Um, so that's, that's pretty, pretty close to what you'd be looking at. It's just, it's a, it's a time, it, it takes a long time too. That, that $12,000 one took me two years, and it's still not over. Um, and, and it's not, well, it's over for my end of it anyway. They're, they gotta sell the, they got to sell the timber on the land and, and go through all of that. But we've quieted the title. They now have clean title. But, you know, her, 
her grandmother or great grandmother, and she's in her 80s, um, did not probate her own estate. And so with six or seven kids, it gets complicated. And, you know, you don't necessarily know who your, your great grandmother's brother was. Um, you know, you have sections of family that people know, but not all sections. And, you know, you have to know them all. And if you don't, we call them John Doe, and we have to notice it in the newspaper. And some newspapers are expensive. So anyway, you, you hire the attorney to clean the title. That's it. Um, and, and you don't have, I mean, you know, and you spend, a, you know, you spend a few dollars to get that done. A, a title search, just the search, to get the data back. So I, I farm that out. I, I, don't, I don't go to the courthouse and gra gather all the information. You, we hire abstractors to go out and, and gather all those documents. The ones that we trust, obviously. But, um, you know, they come back with, you know, any tax liens or any covenants on the title, any deeds out from any of these people that owned it over the last 40, 50, 60 years. And I would say about half the time we find issues. It's not, not big stuff, usually small stuff usually easy things to deal with but in my nine years i've done three quiet titles so there you go about one every three years i find something that cannot be fixed by a simple cousin does a deed to you and you know that's it they're, they're not always simple the attorney clear cleans that title um and and you know I've, I've had ones that you know even right down the street from me where people went in and had a termite inspection done and the termite inspection was uh, there was something wrong with it, or they checked for mold and they found mold. Um, you know, those kinds of inspections are important when you're buying houses. You know, just raw land, you're looking for covenants, you're looking for easements, um, and those are things that your lawyer can find. And your lawyer, better daggone well, tell you he found an easement. Now, if I, if I find an easement for a power line company, I ain't telling you about that because you can see the power line. But if I go on there and I see, well, oh, the guy behind you can go across your land to get to his land, um, that's something I'm going to talk to you about to make sure you want to move forward with it. Um, because, you know, I, you'd much rather spend a few hundred dollars now to discover, uh oh, bad problem, than spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and take on a mortgage um, for a piece of land that you don't want. Um, you know, his, his daddy, you know, he may not have ever used that, that easement and you didn't know anything about it, but you, you know, you've been looking at that land for years and as soon as you plop a house down on it, next thing you know, he's driving his, his Cadillac, you know, through going you know, right across your land because, you know, for whatever reason, he's aggravated by you. I don't know. Those are the kind of things that lawyers are going to find. Um, and so, you know, to the point of you need a realtor, absolutely. Find the right place. Find the right land with the with the with the right uh, issues. Um, I go on Zillow all the time, and the first thing I uncheck is HOA. I, you could not pay me to live in an HOA, um, a place you know it's it's bad enough that you know that Uncle Sam charges me rent, um, but it's even worse for him to charge me rent and then tell me what I'm and then somebody else tell me what I can and cannot do, and then I pay them rent. That's it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I stay away from HOAs, you know, for people who like them, you know, more power to you. Um, but yeah, so those are the things that I think are important. Um, get a realtor to help you find the right place. Get a lawyer to make sure you're buying what, what we call, you know, make sure you're not buying a pig in a poke. Um, you, you, you want to protect yourself. And, and Led was absolutely right about that. Um, absolutely right about that. He, um, you know, and I, and I, it, as soon as he started talking, I was like, I need to do a video on this because, you know, daggum, I hadn't, I hadn't done anything about this and, uh, you know, I had never done anything about that. And, I, you know, mostly I do gardening videos, you know, because, you know, this is the kind of fun stuff. And I said, I was going to sit here and do the, I was going to sit here and do a, oh, a video about potting these things up and I hadn't done it. Oh, there it is. I was trying to find, I got some graphing stuff in this box. There we go. All right. But yeah, so if you, if you have any questions about this stuff, and if you have any questions, 
thought I might have a rat. Um, I'm in my shop. But if, if you have any questions about, you know, legal stuff, you know, like I say, I can only answer questions in South Carolina. Um, and if you were to call my office or any lawyer's office, um, you can call your state bar association and find out who does real estate law and they'll say what area and they can, uh, they can find where you're, uh, you know, where you ought to be, um, where you ought to be looking or who you ought to call. Um, every, every state, you probably heard of the ABA, um, but every state has its own um, bar association. And that bar association is just all the lawyers, right? And, um, you know, those, those lawyers know each other for the most part. You know, I mean, I don't know every lawyer in the state, but I know a good many of them, especially in my area. And so really, if you just pick up the phone and call the law office and say, hey, I'm looking for a real estate lawyer in Columbia, South Carolina, um, can y'all help me with that? Or do you know who's, you know, somebody who could help me with that? They'll probably know. Or they'll say, yeah, we can help you with that. And you're off to the races. So, don't get hung up on, uh, don't get hung up on being able to uh, find your own. Just pick up the phone and call. You know, the four-letter word, help, gets you a long way in this world. So, anyway, I'm going to get to potting these things up and, um, Anyway, uh, I'm glad to take questions on this. Um, don't put them in the comments because I, you know, it's hard for me to find stuff in the comments. But send me an email. Um, I'll give you my my regular email. It's Adam A D A M C N E S S. So Adam C N E S at gmail dot com. Um, and you know, like I say, I'm I'm always glad to answer questions or help. And like I say, you know, if you're not in South Carolina, don't call me because I can't really help you. Um, not without committing malpractice and you know I don't want to use my malpractice insurance if I can help it so anyway this is going to be good I'm going to do a separate video on the, um, the fig cutting but thank y'all have a good night um, I'll just see you in a minute because I'm going to do these uh, I'm going to do these fig cuttings and, and get them all potted up so uh, protect yourself get a lawyer get a real estate agent and talk to you in a minute doing these uh, figs.